saw this morning in the presentation was an outline of the failing nature of our health care system now, the fact that even under the federal health care bill, 32,000 Vermont residents will remain uninsured, and another 15% of Vermont residents will be without adequate health insurance. And even under the federal legislation, we will continue to have rapid cost escalation, such that we can expect that the number of uninsured and underinsured will increase. That's simply unacceptable. What we believe is that the principles that Vermonters expect are universal coverage, a containment of costs, and maintaining and improving the quality in our system. We believe that the outline that Dr. Shao provided today in his report meets those principles and moves Vermont forward. And uh, we will start working on it immediately, working in concert with the Senate and with the administration to move forward this year. Uh, include, of course, realizing the, uh, the economic side of this, but also we'll take into consideration how we need to go ahead mechanically in the future to provide uh, quality health care to all Vermonters. Yeah. And as I said once before, too, as I believe that health care is a right, but as with other rights, there's also responsibilities. And those people who are here in Vermont, hopefully we'll have in this new system, they will, everyone will recognize the importance of preventative care and will take that upon themselves, uh, not only for, uh, for their families, but also for their families' families. So they already outlined, we will, recomm we will recommend option three, and I get, already gave the reasons, as well as outline that option or achieve what you specified in Act 128. Some Vermonters have really minimum or very inadequate benefit package. Some have a very complete. The one we propose is to you provide the benefit benefits at the current average level, which means that for medical and mental health services, if the patient incurred a reasonable cost of $100, the insurance will pay $87 of that. For drugs, if the reasonable cost of that drug is $100, the insurance will pay $77 of that $100. And in our proposed essential benefit plan, the current, the current benefit they have now for dental and for vision care will be increased. Now, for those who have more than this average, like many we understand, let's say you mentioned teachers, some teachers in various towns have negotiated higher benefits, more generous benefits than that. They can keep their benefits, they develop a wraparound to this big standard benefit, so they will not lose. But then, this is what can bring everybody up, upward to a, some standard benefit package. That we propose Vermont actually in, uh, asked the employee to pay a premium uh, payroll contribution, and that's collected by, let's say, the employer, which is our state. And yeah, I would just say that, John, that is, one, this is an area that we want to look at. Two, um, these are not issues that are unfamiliar to the state legislature. Uh, these are issues that we had to grapple when we did a uh, catamount plan and when we've dealt with other health care programs in the past. My guess is that that would be something that we would have to deal with uh, in the health care committee to address any concerns with regard to interstate commerce. Dr.